Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Another short video today. I just wanted to update you a little bit on what KE9NS has been programming for the older flex radios, the 1500, the 3000, and the 5000. Uh, gosh, it's been over a year now since he started revising the original software that Flex Radio came out. Uh, currently, at this particular time, he's up to uh, uh, what he calls point three eight revision, point three eight thirty eight. <clears throat> now, if you check his site a week after I posted this, he'll probably be at 39. Uh, he is literally updating something uh, almost on a weekly basis. So I wanted to kind of just take a few minutes, give you a screen uh, shot of what it looks like now with some of the newer features running. Uh, there are so many now uh, He's actually come out with some documentation that you can you get or you can even download it right off of his site, which I'm going to show you. Uh, and you really have to go through the documentation and actually uh, learn the new features. They're on top of the usual uh, learning curve for the Flex Radio software, which isn't too difficult, but I can tell you there's so many features now that uh, old Joe here can't uh, figure out to uh, remember that many of them. There's so many. So let's uh, jump over here to the screen and I'll, first I'll take you to his site. Then I'll give you a view of the software which is already running right now. So uh, let's jump over to the computer screen. All right, so where do you find this software at? Well, I'm on his site right now. Uh, you can just Google KE9NS, and, and he'll come up. Or you can just type in KE9NS.com, and he'll come up. Uh, you may discover you're at his home page when you get there, and it's going to look something like this. All right, it'll look something like this, a little picture of his shack and everything, and you're going to say, well, where is all this software that he's developing? Just come right up here where it says Power SDR and click that, and you'll be taken to the uh, special page where he posts the updates. So if you scroll down this page a little bit, he's got some pictures of the software. He's got the documentation right here. So if you click this, you'll get a PDF file of the uh, latest documentation on his upgrades. If you go down a little bit further, you're going to find two download buttons or icons or pictures or whatever you want to call them. This is one, and here's the other one. If you've never installed this software before, uh, ever, then you need to download this first and install it, and then come back and download this, which uh, is the updates to the original, uh, his version of Flex. Uh, as I've said before, you don't have to worry about it messing up your original Flex software. It won't affect it at all. The icon will still be on the desktop, and you'll find a new icon on the desktop with his software. So you can run either one, you know. Uh, I got to say, I haven't run the original Flex software in over a year now. I've been running nothing but his software. But I still have the old uh, original Flex software on this computer. So again, if you've never installed it, you have to do this one first. Then you come back after it's installed and you do this one. And then you'll be completely up to date. 
from then on, you don't do this anymore. You just simply come here and click this, and you'll get all the latest updates. Okay, so uh, this is a one time only, this one right here. Now, here's what I do every week I come to this site, I scroll down the page, and I click right under here where it says revision history. I click that, and it takes me to all the revision updates in order by date. And I look at the top. And he's, his latest one is dated June 6th. All right. And it's numbered. Oh, well, look at this. Uh, I'm wrong already. I didn't check this before I started the video. And he now has a revision 39. A revision 39. He's calling it experimental right now. He kind of describes what the latest revision uh, does to the software. And then all you need to do is go back up here to the top of the page. Let me scroll up. And click this and uh, install it. And you'll be up to date with revision 39, uh, all the way through revision 39 in uh, the case of what we just found out. Uh, anyway, that's how you do it. Uh, if you've got an older Flex Radio and you are not running his software, you are missing uh, some really fantastic features uh, that he's uh, incorporated into the original Flex uh, software. So uh, jump out here and get his new software and play with it. Experiment with it. See, see what you think about it. Let's kind of put that on the down at the bottom and let's open up the Flex window right there. And I'm running it on 20 meters right now. There's a bunch of things on the screen. You can see uh, the gray line. Now, I did this myself. I made, I reversed the colors, which you can do. You have complete control on this background. So I went in there and I made nighttime light and daytime darker. That way I can easily pick out the gray line exactly where it is uh, on the map. As I've said, this is a real-time map of the world showing the day, night, and the gray line. So this is all nighttime right here. Now you can also see he's got the ISS showing up on the map now with a circle that kind of shows you uh, what the range is, uh, visual, you know, if you wanted to look at it in the sky or if you wanted to transmit a signal to the ISS, uh, how far out it would reach uh, before it dropped below the horizon. So by watching this, uh, when it comes across the USA over here uh, or your home country, wherever it might be, you can tell if it's in range for visual or radio communications. <clears throat> so he's incorporated a real-time ISS, International Space Station, uh, tracking feature. Now, let me open up a little box for you here. And uh, this is a box, and the way I got it, is I simply clicked up here where it said uh, spotting. I clicked that. Then I came down here and clicked track. And what that did was uh, put the uh, day night onto the screen. It split the screen up and gave me a two thirds uh, pan adapter and one third waterfall. Okay, I uh, did both of those things at the same time. So that's this little thing that says uh, spotting. But the neat thing that it does, and I think I've mentioned this before, this is real-time spotting uh, coming in from uh, this particular uh, DX spotting uh, beacon, reverse beacon. 
and uh, you can select these others, and, or you can put your own in here if you prefer a different one. But he gives you three uh, choices to, to begin with. So here are some spotters, uh, some DX or other signals that have been spotted by North American spotters only. I checked that. I could uncheck it and get spotting from all over the world, but I want to only uh, see what's actually being heard by North American spotters at this time. There's a bunch of other neat things in here, like uh, he's incorporated the Voice of America algorithm that they use to determine how far the Voice of America signal would travel. He's incorporated that into this software. So let me kind of move this over just a little bit so you can see the map. Now, you remember here's... Here's where I am over here. So let's uh, let's click this Voice of America uh, signal strength map. All right, and there you go. It's uh, painted transmission strength uh, for various types of antennas, and you can select the beam if you want to. See right here, you can select the beam. I believe this is a vertical is what it uh, originally does. And by the colors of these lines, it tells you how far you can be heard, heard at that particular time. It's just a computer program trying to calculate that from the current conditions. So uh, that's part of this program now. Uh, nothing like it exists, uh, to my knowledge, in any of the new flex radios, or in any other radio, for that matter, that I've seen uh, out on the market. So kind of a unique, neat feature. Let's turn that off again by clicking this right here. And it's gone away. So, you can see we've got some DX spots on here right now. <clears throat> What's really neat is if you click these, it will take the radio and change the frequency to whatever frequency is listed here and set up the radio in whatever mode is listed here. So it happens to be CW uh, or some kind of digital mode. It'll set the radio up for that particular mode just by clicking one of these uh, DX spots. So let's click one here, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. We'll, we'll try uh, this one right here. So here we are. Now let me kind of get this out of the way. It's changed frequencies and done everything. Let me get it back here and get this out of the way. And now you see some lines on the screen. Those are the DX spots and the exact position on the pan adapter where they're located. So, and it gives you the call sign of that DX spot. You can see it right there. And of course, if you look below it here on the pan adapter, uh, you can tell if you're actually receiving that, visually tell if you're receiving that signal or not just by looking at the screen. Here's a signal over here. So we are receiving this spot right here. It's coming in pretty good. Let's move over there. And I'll let you hear it. Let me take it off of mute. And I don't know how well you can hear that off the speakers that are on the desk over here, but uh, I can hear it. Uh, let me kind of turn the sound off again. Here's another really strong signal, somebody trying to contact this fella right here. Now, if you're curious to know who that is or where they may be, you can click, uh, you can right click this uh, call sign. 
and it opens up QRZ to the page on QRZ where that call sign is located and you can see where that person uh, is. And I did all that by right clicking, simply right clicking the little call sign that's on the screen. So if we come over here and right click this fella right here, it'll open up his page. And right there, and uh, located in Spain, of course, <clears throat> EC1DD. So he has basically tied this software to both the DX uh, spotting system and uh, QRZ for lookup purposes. All that is incorporated inside of this software. He's also incorporated an internet time server, which is very handy uh, if you're working the some of the digital modes where your time has to be synced. That's also been incorporated into this software. Uh, <clears throat> uh, another neat thing that he has done to this, let me get this box open again so you can see it. I'm looking at this spotting box again. And let's look over here. Uh, he's got automatic ways now to, when you're on a net or something, a net on the uh, radio, you can click uh, the frequency and it will automatically put it into memory. And that way you can go back to it if you need to. So he's got some automatic ways now to put frequencies directly into uh, the computer memory so that you can recapture them uh, later on or tomorrow or next week or whenever. Uh, the other thing that's uh, kind of neat that he's done is that, let me see here just a second, right here, where he's got the beacon check. You can see a little button that says beacon check, fast scan, slow scan. What it will do if I click that, it will run through all of the worldwide beacons and sit on the frequency for a second or two to see if it can hear the beacon. And if it does, it will give you the signal report. It'll bring up a little box, give you a signal report for that particular beacon. And it'll run through all of them automatically. So, uh, you know, if you're really a hardcore DXer, you could uh, make yourself a cup of coffee, uh, come in here, click that button, let it run through the beacons, and you would have a really good idea of what propagation, real propagation happens to be at that particular time. So pretty neat stuff. I haven't even begun to uh, talk about all the features that he's had with this thing. This is uh, like the tip of the tip of the iceberg. There's some features that uh, aren't obvious. Like if I right click where it says this auto waterfall pan level, if I right click it, it adjusts the height of the pan adapter. If I left click it, I'm sorry, it adjusts the waterfall, have that backwards. If I left click it, it adjusts the height of the pan adapter. And you can now go into settings and alter how you would like that to appear, or what signal strength, uh, minimum signal strength you'd like to have. Uh, he has some default settings, but you can go in there now and change those. So if you like to have a big, tall uh, pan adapter receiving part, you know, where the signals are big and tall, you can go into settings and adjust that and uh, just raise the minimum here on the uh, 
dB setting, raise it higher, and these signals will be larger or bigger, taller. So adjustments like that that you don't really think about. And down here, he's got some automatic timers. Notice that when I hovered over that particular feature, it kind of gave me a quick uh, down and dirty explanation of what that what it is and how to how to work it. All right, he's got that all over the screen. So a lot of times you'll go over something. And boom, something pops up, and if you read it, it kind of tells you how that works. For instance, he's got an automatic timer uh, that will either uh, just uh, a countdown timer for 10 minutes. Uh, you can set it for any time limit, but its default is 10 minutes because we have to ID every 10 minutes. And it will uh, prompt you to ID. He also has a way where you can record an ID and have it automatically play uh, your uh, call sign ID every 10 minutes. Uh, very, very in-depth uh, changes to the software. All different functions that you really wouldn't think about until you read the documentation. So. Uh, I guess that's probably as far as we want to get in that today, but I, I'm very impressed with what he has done uh, with that software. Get you back on my smiling face. I'm very impressed with what he's done with that software. And uh, I've, I've also made the comment to several of my ham buddies that I personally think the best deal in uh, HF radios right now, the best deal is to go to the Flex Radio site and uh, look through their used Flex 5000, 3000, or 1500 radios that they've taken and trade. Uh, for the last year, Flex has been taking uh, the older models in trade. They recertify them, open them up, clean them up, check everything out, and then they put them out for sale. I've seen a Flex 3000 on there for about $900. Flex 3000. So you throw this software at a Flex 3000, you have a very modern radio that's been certified by Flex and uh, with a 90 day warranty. For $900, uh, fully software defined radio. And I think that's the best deal in uh, used radios at the present time is to go out there and buy either a Flex 5000 or 3000 or uh, maybe a little QRP rig like the Flex 1500 and buy it used, uh, recertified by Flex Radio. And then throw this software at it, and you've just upgraded it two or three, two or three years into the future, uh, the way it used to be when uh, Flex stopped supporting it several years ago. So with that said, uh, I hope I gave you a little bit better idea of what's going on with the older Flex radios right now. Uh, get yourself a flex radio, an older one, and uh, start using some of these neat features to help you with uh, your DX hunting. Uh, you have no idea how much easier it is to find QSOs when you can actually see the signals on the screen. And of course, we got a big screen. We don't have some little pan adapter that's this big, you know, with just some little bitty marks on there, which I don't know how useful that is. On my big screen, I can see very weak signals in there and then attempt to uh, bring them out of the noise with some filtering that's available uh, in the Flex radios. You can't do that with these little bitty pan adapter screens. You won't ever see those weak signals. The screen's just too, too small. 
Anyway, with that said, I wish you 73 and clear skies and keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Everybody be good. See y'all later.